But there were only a few miles to go to a Swire and there, a team of locals had already begun the groundwork for our stadium. They were using shipping containers which would form the framework and we had even lined up some football cars for the Argentinians to use. But then we received word that up ahead there was some kind of protest about our visit and the producers decided it would be best if we went to a nearby hotel. Who's that like in the car park, James? Do you know? No, I've seen them before, but I'm not sure who they are. Well, this lot are taking a lot of interest in the camera vehicles. What is it? I don't know what these blokes came out of, but they're heading this way. They're coming down the front. Who is? Are they coming up here? And they're heading, James, please keep your face back. You send the vehicle there with the flag and all that kind of stuff, and we're getting, there must be about 10 or 15 in the foyer just now. I spoke to the manager, he's a little bit, nothing, not a lot that he can do. So I think at the moment, if we all stay in our rooms. All right, here's the situation. Um, we're holed up in this room, I don't know whose it is, but it isn't ours. Uh, there's, there's a gang. Nationalists, whatever, believe that the Falklands are Argentinian, they don't like the British, and they're in the hotel. I was stuck in here, and we don't know what's going on. The protesters consisted of some Falkland war veterans and their associates, who said that if we didn't stop filming, there would be trouble. The arrival of the police made us realise this was no idle threat. The head veteran accused us of putting a fake number plate on the Porsche that was a deliberate reference to the Falklands War. Our producers tried to explain it wasn't fake and that it would be replaced for the game of football, but they got nowhere. Are you saying we've got to get the hell out of Tierra del Fuego? We're being ordered to leave Tierra del Fuego, yes? We are. They want us as people out. We have just been ordered out of Tierra del Fuego, ordered out of effectively Argentina. Well, we haven't, we haven't had any animosity whatsoever in the whole trip. Everybody's been perfectly decent, very charming. All yeah. we wanted to do was come here and play football. And what's happened is... The producers said it would take 24 hours to organise the departure of such a large crew. But even though the police were present, the veterans said a mob was on its way and that there would be violence if we weren't gone in three. Right, guys, everyone grab a bit of equipment, please. Everyone grab something, OK? Where is it, then? Can we get an escort? Meanwhile, the three of us, who were the main target for the protesters' anger, were still holed up in our room. Now, we've been doing a whole lot of Butch Cassidy stuff on the way over here. Um, Come this on. Is, this is Butch Cassidy for real. Guys, everyone in the cars. With four tonnes of equipment loaded into the cars, the 31-strong film crew headed out of town. They're right on your tail, Gav. Keep it tight in the rear. Yep. And soon, darkness fell. Everybody just remain cool. The main thing is just to keep this convoy rolling. A police escort would take them 184 miles to the border town of San Sebastian, where they'd cross over into Chile. And since the protesters' demands had been met, the crew hoped they were out of danger. But a short while later, they realised they were not alone. Bikes behind the star cars. Bikes behind the star cars. 